I'm going to go out on a limb and guess that you don't like drawing in perspective. That's right, we've probably never met, but based on my experience, it's a safe bet that I'm right. The problem is the following unavoidable truth. Perspective is absolutely crucial for every drawing that you ever make. There's just no avoiding it. But it somehow seems scary. There are so many rules. Well, you and I, we're going to tackle this thing. I'm making it a personal challenge to help you enjoy drawing in perspective. And in today's first lesson, you're going to see that it's not nearly as scary as you think. Here I've got a nice blank white canvas, and I'm going to do a quick perspective drawing. First I'll draw this quick apple, and then I'll draw another apple. Maybe I'll even put a little shadow underneath it. Okay, that'll do it. I'm done. Are you wondering where my perspective points are? Maybe a ruler. You're waiting for the ruler. Well, here's a secret that might change the way that you look at perspective drawing forever. It's just drawing. I'm going to say that again. It's just drawing. The invention of linear perspective was a tool to help translate this 3D space that we interact in every day onto a two-dimensional plane, your paper or your computer screen, for any sort of drawing. This is not just a tool designed to draw train tracks and street corners and skyscrapers. Put simply, it's just a tool to show how stuff is arranged in space. You do this all the time and you never think about it. It only starts getting scary when someone gets out the T-square and begins to carefully measure out vanishing points. The honest truth is that rulers and guides are great. Someday, when you want to work carefully and accurately, you'll want one. But that's not where we're starting. Instead, we're going to start with a big, fat brush, 10 or 20 pixels wide. And if you want bonus points, why don't you try the same assignment with a crayon? That's right, a, a kid's crayon, any color of your choice. This way, you're not going to be accurate. You can't be. Your homework is to draw flat, four-sided shapes. Make sure to download the template at the bottom of the post, either as a PDF to print out or as a JPEG to use in Photoshop, and you're going to follow one simple rule. Wherever you see two lines that are in parallel, and I've highlighted these two to make them even more visible, don't cross them. So as I draw my line to start making my four-sided shape, I'll try and stay in between them like this stay parallel in perspective. What I'm trying to avoid is crossing one and making lines that are not parallel. So again, I'm going for parallel, like this. Not being particularly careful about it, just trying to make sure that I stay generally lined up with the grid that's on the paper. So I'll hide these and show you what I mean. To make my rectangle, I'll start with this line, and then I'm gonna do a 90 degree angle and follow between these perspective lines. Now I'll do it again for the opposite side. And then I'll connect these somewhere. I could either do it way up here, or I could make it a short rectangle. And then I'll erase away what I don't need. That's it. You just do a rectangle in two-point perspective. You didn't need to use a ruler, a vanishing point, or anything. It's a little crude, but this is it. That's all there is to it. You want a cool party trick? Add in a second rectangle. Same deal. So here I'm just following this basic perspective grid that's laid down. Now you could tell if something was wrong if it went askew, like that. See how that just doesn't feel right in perspective? Well, that means that it's wrong. So I'll erase that one and try again. And generally speaking, as these get closer to the horizon, they're just gonna flatten out a bit because you're seeing them at a steeper angle. But you could do this all day, just slowly drawing your rectangles in two-point perspective. 
and erasing it if the line seems to be not quite parallel with the others. So download the template and go crazy. Try some small ones and some big ones. See if you can draw 10 rectangles on a single image, all in the proper perspective. Additionally, this is one of those homework assignments that really works better analog. So try downloading the PDF and printing it out. Again, I'd really recommend using a crayon. I'm not joking about this. But if you want to use a pencil or pen, that's fine too. So if you can draw these rectangles, you are drawing in freehand perspective. In fact, I think you're going to enjoy it. So consider this a teaser. If you hate perspective, love perspective, or just love drawing these rectangles, tell me about it in the comments. This is something that we're going to do a lot more of here, so get ready for it. It's one of those things that I think you're going to like it once you've learned it, and you'll realize that you've been scared for years for no reason. And as always, thanks for watching.